Another example of this that the ethologist soon showed, but these were with captive primates. You take a monkey who was raised in isolation, has never seen another monkey, and at some point in adolescence, it's a male monkey, and you sit him down and you show him a film. And the film consists of the face of a huge, scary male monkey of the same species giving a threatening display, which is usually displaying the canines there. And this is a monkey who has no prior experience with monkeys. It has never seen a monkey before. All of its interactions have been with Barney or whatever. It knows nothing about any of this. And you show it that, and it will freak out and give a fixed action pattern a subordinate gesture, crouching down and not making eye contact. Whoa, where'd that come from? No learning from trial and error. It was simply there as a fixed action pattern, a whole bunch of things that the monkey does with its torso, its face, all of that. Where does experience come in? The monkey needs to learn that you give a subordinating gesture like that to some big scary animal, you don't give it to infants. It needs to learn the right social context. So that's where it comes in. So you've got all these examples of behaviors that are hardwired, whatever that means. And what you have nonetheless is shaping by experience. And this is what the ethologists learned. And what was clear after a while was all sorts of animals already knew all about ethology. They understood what a fixed action pattern was as follows. Type of monkey in East Africa called vervet monkeys. If you were a vervet monkey, there are three things on earth that terrify you. One is a leopard, another is a snake, and the third is an eagle. Leopards come from below, snakes come from below, eagles come from above. And what you have in vervet monkeys are fixed action patterns of alarm calls that they give when spotting one of the predators. They have different alarm calls for each of the species. And what has been shown is you fly over the silhouette of a perfectly like nice bird there that's not going to try to carry it away and you don't elicit it. It's not just things going on up there. It's a fixed action pattern for scary, terrifying stuff up above versus scary, terrifying stuff below with four legs versus scary, terrifying below with no legs at all. And they all know how to do this without prior experience. But what goes on is the same thing that makes it a fixed action pattern, which is it can be sculpted by experience. What am I saying here, which is you are a young vervet monkey and you've got these fixed action patterns. That's great. What you have to learn how to do, though, is not screw up and say, oh my God, there's an eagle when you actually should be saying there's a leopard. Because if you say there's an eagle, everyone's going to run down the tree. And if you say there's a leopard, everybody's going to run up the tree. And you get some kid who gets it backwards, and that's going to have some bad consequences. How do you know adult vervet monkeys have studied ethology and fixed action patterns? Because they don't listen to the kid until some adult agrees with them. Because they know this is some dumbass kid that doesn't know the language yet very well and makes mistakes under a certain age Adult vervets don't respond to alarm calls other than with vigilance trying to figure out what the kid's talking about until it is seconded by an adult. So what about fixed action patterns in humans? Classic example, infant smiling, involving all sorts of muscles that, like, who knows what's involved in them, all sorts of muscles that produce this without prior experience. How do you know? Fiber optic mysteries show that fetuses smile at various points. What else? You will see smiling in blind babies, so there is no visual information coming in. What's smiling? It's a fixed action pattern. Where's the learning? Learning who to smile at, learning that mannequins aren't going to smile back at you, and things of that sort. That's it being shaped by experience. More fixed action patterns. Infants are not having to have trial and error experience with learning there's this thing you do with your mouth right after you're born that keeps you from being really, really hungry, and it's called nursing. Ooh, can somebody demonstrate that for me? That's a fixed action pattern. What happens is kids get more and more efficient at it. The number of calories they can consume per unit time, they get better at doing it. 
More fixed action patterns in humans. Every culture on Earth, people raising their eyebrows and greeting to somebody. Every culture on Earth, people can recognize what anger looks like, what fear looks like, what disgust, what contempt. All of those, these are all fixed action patterns. And where does the context come in with all of them obviously learning when you interpret this as good news, bad news, when you pretend you don't see it, all of that, learning the social context. So humans are absolutely full of fixed action patterns.